This should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three. Lovely. these songs and think oh I never knew this was Bob Dylan or I never oh okay. I know this song blah yeah. blah blah um it's a little bit of an easy listening one I think it will work well if you're cooking in your kitchen you know it's, it's not going to be lo- not going to be loud and screamy like the same nah, it's, it's much uh, much softer and uh I think um yeah I'm not sure because it is yeah, it's a different kind of style than we've chosen for you before so I, it could go either way but um I think he he's such a poet and there's so many um beautiful lyrics and and uh, messages and stories in his songs that uh, it's a nice easy listening album get some wine have a listen it's it's a short album only 13 songs and they're quite short songs so you, you'll be all right okay. perfect <laughs> so i've that's got plenty it. of wine to drink so that's great there okay. you go so have a bottle and and, and enjoy so the free Leland yeah. bob dylan bye bob dylan ah it's another classic it is another classic so excellent stuff and uh, yeah, it couldn't be more different to the Sex Pistols for sure. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, the good news is we're getting messages coming through that the sound is back on. So apologies for the gremlins that are uh, are munching on our uh, um, uh, whatever it is they're munching on. I don't know what would they be munching on in Facebook Live. I have no idea. But the, but we're we're back. We're back. Hurrah! This is good. So while we are back, it's probably a good time to maybe just sort of relax a little bit, maybe sort of chill, put our feet up, have a glass of wine, maybe a cup of tea, because it is time for This Day in History. Oh, it's, it's even poetic, maybe. Fiber optic cable, I'm being told, the oh, gremlins are much. It's almost like Bob Dylan, you know? <laughs> <laughs> If Bob Dylan is listening, if you want to come and have a little sing-song with us, you're more than welcome any time. So today, it is Thursday, the 23rd of September, 2021. It is officially autumn. It is, yeah. It is. I have noticed some of the trees starting to change considerably. Mm, they have. No, yeah, not, not a lot, but there is some change happening. There are more leaves drifting along now and again. And uh, I... It is chillier the other the other morning. Um, uh, little Tubbs was on the radiator, and I thought that's a bit odd. And then I realised the radiator they come on automatically, and they were very softly on because it was really quite chilly that morning. <laughs> and I noticed that the little garden birds I'm feeding are much more active and visiting a lot more frequently. So yeah, the, the changes are coming for sure. <laughs> yes. Something's blowing in the wind, I would say, actually. Indeed, yes, absolutely. There you go. So, in 1561, we're going back a bit, King Philip II of Spain forbids Spanish settlements in Florida. 
I think he would be a little bit disappointed now if he went to Florida, because there's an awful lot of Spanish-speaking people that are living there. In 1642, Harvard College in Cambridge, Massachusetts, opens its doors. And on this day in 1879, Richard Rhodes invents a hearing aid called the audiophone. Oh. And it ties in. 1817, uh, sorry, 1884, American Herman Hollerith patents his mechanical tabulating machine. It's the oh, right. data processing in 1884. Very exciting. Hmm. It all, yeah, so that sounds like too long ago. It might, maybe it was just kind of, well. He says it's mechanical, I don't know, but yeah, data processing. In 1889, only five years later, Nintendo Cupai, also later known as Nintendo, was founded mm -hmm. by Fusario Yamuchi, um, yes. who went on to produce um, the playing card game Hanafuda. Anybody okay. know Hanafuda? Well, I've heard of Nintendo, but not yes. the Hanafuda. <laughs> I don't play cards much. I, I seem to remember when I was younger, I used to play um, a little bit of, uh, oh, what did I play? Patience. Mm. And, um, yeah, what else did I play? Oh, Stack, of course. I don't know. Are you, are you a card playing game? Playing kind of person? I love a game of cards, actually. I quite enjoy it. And uh, we used to play, I think it's called Gin Gin Rummy. Could that be? Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. Things like that. And a cracking game called 99 that I used to play with my cousin, which was just basically all about shouting and trying to get 99 to count on the cards. It's a lot of fun. So it's usually after some drinks. Um, but anyway, yes, but I do I do quite like uh, a card game. Um, I sort of wish I could play more of the, you know, like bridge. I'd love to learn how to play favorite because that seems to be quite the, the cult thing almost doesn't yes. it and there's so many of these i'm not saying i'd love to play poker but i'd love to try once to have, have a hand of poker and understand all the different um you know hands and cards yes. that you get but yeah it, it's i think it's one of these you know one of these things like you say it's a, a kind of autumn winter evening type activity isn't it's it card true. playing <laughs> I have played cards. I wouldn't try mm. to play cards regularly, no. I have played poker. Mm. At school. Oh. At school. Oh, oh, my, oh my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. No money was exchanged. Uh, uh, I won't ask what was, uh, what was exchanged. <laughs> and he <laughs> 40 on this very day. Dutch artist Pete <laughs> Mondrian leaves <laughs> Europe for New York, where he lives for the rest of his life. Oh. And in 1957, that'll be the day why Buddy Holly and the Crickets reaches number one. That'll be the day when you say goodbye. That'll be the day when you make me cry of the 50s. 1962, ABC's first colour TV series, The Jetsons by Hannah Barbera. Oh, was first oh, the Jetsons. I used to love that as a kid. Uh, I... I... I remember seeing it, but like kind of a rerun thing. It was kind of, it came back um, as one of these classic cartoons of the blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah. Hmm. yeah. But I remember as a kid, I thought it was great. 1969, Northern Star and Illinois Uni University newspaper start rumours that Paul McCartney is dead. Oh, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> He's not dead then, and he is not dead now. I probably shouldn't say that, actually. I might have jinxed things, of course. 1977, Cheryl Ladd replaces Farrah Fawcett on TV Ooh, show. Controversial. Oh, my goodness, that was a big deal. Yes, indeed. I loved Cheryl Ladd, though. I, I, I was always wanting to be her in the show. In show in the show. <laughs> it probably is the hair. <laughs> Shack Redemption, directed by Frank Darabont and starring Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman, is released. Now, The Shawshank Redemption, this is one of those films that just comes out over and over again as a favourite for an awful lot of people to say about their top five films. This is one of those that comes out. Now, I think it's a good film, but it's certainly not in my top five. <gasps> oh. 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 I, I, re I mean, it's a, it's a tough watch. It's not like happy camper, la la la, romantic viewing. Um, you know, it's not a first date film, but I think it's just uh, 
I, th I think it's the acting in it. It's so well cast, the story, and it's such a, it's such a long movie, but it it keeps you engaged the entire yes. time. I really, I really like this one. I've watched it several times actually. I do, like it. I do like it very, very much, but I would not say it's in my top five. In yes. 2002, this very day, the first public version of the web browser Mozilla Firefox is released, and in 2000. Iran blocks the use of Google as a search engine. Wow. In 2019, on this very day, climate activist Greta Thunberg scolds world leaders, how dare you, for not addressing climate change at the UN Climate Action Summit in New York. Right, let's have a look at some birthdays. Uh, born on this day in 1926, John Coltrane, that's jazz saxophonist, uh, was born in North Carolina. Ray Charles, 1913, the American singer and pianist who pioneered soul music, was born in Albany, Georgia. 1943, Julio Iglesias, the Spanish singer. He did not sound like that. And in 1949, Bruce Springsteen, the American singer, songwriter and rock musician known as The Boss was born on this very day. Lots of, lots of musicians, it would appear. And in 1959, Jason Alexander, he played George Costanza in Seinfeld. He was born in Newark, New Jersey. And a quick shout out to Martine Bernard Pelisa um, in Gay France, um, possibly Gay Paris, I'm not 100% sure, but uh, her husband Cyril says, happy birthday. They're going to be listening yeah. from France this evening. So happy birthday yeah. to Martine. Happy birthday to everybody who is celebrating this day. Happy birthday. Hope you're having a happy day. How you choose to celebrate it? Just like us. And that was this day in history. Yes. Joyous anniversaire. Oh, <laughs> Get in there at the end. <laughs> I know. It does sound so fancy, doesn't yeah. it? Yes. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, very sexy. Everything in French sounds sexy. In my opinion, anyway. Right. I think it's probably time for a bit of news, Trace. Yes. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that. Tracy Taylor with the news. Yes, thank you, Joe. And good evening, everyone. It's September 23rd, and you're watching the Master Tradition on Facebook Live. First to look at your weekend weather on Friday and Saturday will remain dry and bright with plenty of sunny spells and highs of 23. There is a risk of some thunderstorms on Sunday, however. The temperatures will still reach 25 degrees. Moving to your news bulletin for tonight and our roundup of local news. Hollywood star and environmental activist Leonardo DiCaprio is set to invest in moulds of meat. The Maastricht-based food technology company was founded in 2016 and is said to be very excited to have DiCaprio on board as an advisor and investor. DiCaprio has said that one of the most impactful ways to fight the climate crisis is to transform the food system. Maastricht University Hospital will be on strike for 24 hours on Tuesday next, along with six other university medical centres across the country. The strike is set to highlight the demand for better working conditions and wage increases. There has never been such a large-scale strike in the Netherlands by employees of academic hospitals before. Only emergency care will be available during the strike, and in Maastricht, acute care and oncology care will also continue on the day. The average number of daily coronavirus infections in the Netherlands fell for the 13th straight day today. There are now 513 patients with COVID-19 being treated in Dutch hospitals. And the Dutch court has ruled that a 12-year-old boy has the right to get a COVID vaccine in order to visit his dying grandmother, despite the objections of his vaccine skeptic father. In one of the first cases of its kind in the Netherlands, the unnamed boy in the northern city of Groningen argued that getting the vaccine would reduce his chances of passing on an infection to his grandma. Children aged 12 to 17 in the Netherlands can choose to be vaccinated but need permission from both parents. In this case, the boy's parents are divorced and his mother agreed. Almost 40 Dutch mayors, mainly from the south of the Netherlands, have signed a manifesto calling on the government to legalise soft drugs as part of a campaign to tackle organised crime and the infiltration of legitimate companies and organisations by drug criminals. The mayors feel the issue must have a prominent place in the next cabinet's plans. 
And the Wilhelmina Bridge in Maastricht will soon be undergoing some maintenance. From 6 a.m. on October 25th until 6 a.m. on October 29th, the bridge will be fully closed. Then, as of November 5th, the bridge will be partially or fully closed from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. Traffic wardens will be on site during the closures. In other news tonight, jets of red hot lava shot high into the sky on the Spanish island of La Palma this morning as toxic ash from the volcano coated the surrounding area. Authorities sought shelter for thousands of people forced to flee. For fifth day, lava is flowing down the slopes of the volcano. And new research suggests that tiny antibodies produced by llamas could provide a new frontline treatment against coronavirus in the form of a nasal spray. Scientists at the Rosalind Franklin Institute have found that the nanobodies, a smaller form of the antibody generated by llamas and camels, can effectively target the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. And finally tonight, a walrus has been spotted on the beach in Skirmonikog. It's the first such sighting of one of these mammals on the Wadden Islands since 1998. Seal sanctuary Ikomare has called the sighting very exceptional. An adult walrus, walrus weighs about 1,500 kilograms and they are native to the Arctic, so this chap is very far from his habitat. The good news is the animal seems to be uninjured and Ikomare will therefore not intervene but will still continue to monitor. And that's it for tonight. For more local news, you can follow RTD News in English on Facebook and Instagram. If you are a local business, be sure to check out the Support Your Local Business South Glimber Facebook page, a joint initiative between Hashtag Maastricht and the Maastricht Edition. And if you want to discover events, concerts and cultural activities going on in Maastricht and the surrounding areas, head on over to maastrichter.com. If a historical walking tour is more your thing, check out Meet Maastricht, the key to your city. And finally, don't forget that you can always find us on the Maastricht Edition Facebook page, on our YouTube channel, on Redbubble and on Instagram. Nicely done, Artrice. Thank you. Lovely stuff. Uh, llamas and camels, eh? And Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I'm more excited about the, the llamas and camels. And I'll tell you for why. Because um, uh, alpacas are related to mm. llamas, of course. I have an alpaca farm at the end of my road here. I'm wondering if I just go and sniff a couple of them, whether it would have the same effect. I'm thinking not, but people might twitch their curtains and wonder. Maybe if you let it spit in your face or something. Then. Maybe, yes. Oh, I don't yes. think alpacas spit. I think they're too nice for that. They're all too nice. They're all too <laughs> they're nice. Very, they're very interesting, this institute that's uh, discovered this. So who knows? Maybe that's something that might come. I guess they have to develop it a little further, but uh, yeah. certainly interesting. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who else is nice, actually, and that's Joris from uh, Kester. He's going to be well, joining us now. Indeed, and he does not spit at all. He doesn't spit. No, he doesn't spit. We've heard this about him. But here he is. Hello, Joris. Good evening. Welcome to the Maastricht edition. Are you with one, us? Yes, yes one is. second. Oh, take your time. <laughs> hey, think, I, can you hear us okay? Yeah, I can hear you now. Excellent. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> we've, had, you. we've had a few technical problems this evening. Oh, look, there we go. He's got a nice little background going on there as well. Excellent. We're all done. Yeah, it's, it's good to be here. It's also, also good that I can hear you loud Yes, yes. Yes, um, we have no idea what was going on there, but um, God bless Facebook. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, helping us out there. But welcome to the show. We are here to talk about Keska. Um, we're very excited about this because um, we had no idea that uh, this place existed. Um, so we're very glad that uh, you're on the show. But before we find out more about Keska, let's find out a bit about yourself. What is your connection um, to Keska, how did you get involved, what your background is? We're assuming you're a local boy? I am actually. I was born in Maastricht. Oh, nice. Excellent. <laughs> and I actually only know about Keska since uh, just over a year. Mm -hmm. It's I, I, had, I was on an entrepreneur meetup uh, mm -hmm. where I met someone who is a part of Keska. Uh -huh. uh, and it sounded pretty mysterious and but it's also sounded like a great place to be as an entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. not long afterwards, I like visited and then 
joined the community and yeah, so many beautiful things happened really since then. So this the rest is, is history, yeah, as they say. Yeah. So um, this is, from what I understand, is about creating an environment where innovative people can meet and share ideas together. Yeah. Yeah. So Keske is a community of entrepreneurs helping each other to become autonomous and also to grow startups, uh, which results into fruitful collaborations and all kinds of innovations. So what, what are these environments like then? Are we talking offices or, or uh, workshops? What, mm -hmm. what, what have we got? Well, the first Keske community uh, was actually in Kerkrade and there's a lot of there's a lot of hardware companies there. So all kinds of 3D machines and mm -hmm. all kinds of crazy machines, really. And and also mm -hmm. just a bunch of people, entrepreneurs uh, sitting there, working there and collaborating in uh, various ways. And so there's also a community in Vals and mm -hmm. I am actually in, yeah, I'm in Maastricht uh, mm -hmm. where well, in Maastricht there are mostly software companies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a few, there's a few startups now and also a lot of like one person uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we've all doubled in size since like, in one month. So wow, that oh, great. That's, good. that's good going. Yeah. yeah, also like why I said that it was kind of mysterious at first to me is mm. because there was no promotion whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And we only started promoting uh, at the beginning of August. And mm -hmm. since then we doubled in size and we will be relocating to a new uh, location and there we have much more space to grow and also space for makers to join so makers machines as well as uh yeah software companies in the office space very interesting are we allowed to know where your new location is or is it still top secret well it's still kind of secret oh. but it, won't, it won't be that secret anymore like a week or two from now. Okay, yeah. we'll have to be patient then and see. But very, yeah. very interesting. And until now, have you had any um, majorly big collaborations or any like really big things going on? Or is it smaller groups so far that have been making use of your, uh, your um, mm -hmm. hub, if you like? Well, yeah, all kinds of collaborations. So personally, I worked for one of the startups, Stratopo, for a half, over half a year. Um, mm -hmm. And I also see a lot of people really joining each other's teams, mm -hmm. but there's also um, something called craft and coding, which is an initiative mm -hmm. to do shared projects. And a year or two ago, just before COVID, they did yeah one really big project where yeah all kinds of entrepreneurs in Casca joined. So and we're actually relaunching that in a week from now. So let's see yeah. where it takes us. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. So yeah. give us an idea of exactly how this works then, because if you mm -hmm. if you have all these different entrepreneurs from from different backgrounds, and and you're, a lot of them are probably startups because they're, they're they are still at that development stage. If they start collaborating and and, and working together, is is this actually encouraging the companies to to merge and form a new company? How, how does that actually work? Um. It is possible, like some new companies did uh, originate out of those uh, collaborations. There's one of them, Cobble, is actually, yeah, uh, growing now and uh, really picking up some momentum. Uh, mm -hmm. But mostly, I mean, I haven't seen mergers. So also, yeah, people are working together, always looking for win-wins. And I mean, we are also open. We open our doors to to everyone. It's not a secluded group, you know. Um, and that's also why I'm happy here to talk a bit about Keska and because uh, we want to be more open. We want to be more in the, yeah, in the visual place as well. Well, I have to say, when you said 3D machines, I got, I started getting excited because I'm, I get uh, 3D yeah. printers is something that I'm, I am so excited about. But this stems from my childhood and watching Star mm -hmm. Trek uh, and seeing uh, what they used in Star Trek, which was sort of like this 
um, uh, their version of a microwave at the time where you would just press a few mm -hmm. buttons and then you'd open a door and out would come a meal. And of course, these days, it's exactly what you can get. So these 3D machines that you have there and on all the other equipment, mm -hmm. where is this coming from? How is it actually funded? Um, well, a lot of times it's just funded through the companies themselves. Oh. Well, they, they use the machines uh, mm -hmm. to make, produce parts, for example, for other companies. And there's also actually a new startup called Digi Sculptures, and they make, um, well, 3D printed sculptures of people. So you can have, yeah, you can have a 3D uh, sculpture of yourself uh, made there. Tracy, also... we should have one of Matt. <laughs> So when Matt leaves yeah, us in a few weeks, we can we can have a three D version of him sitting there. Just yeah, we could, but it just w it wouldn't be the same. No. I'm sorry, no, it just <laughs> it just wouldn't work. As much as I love you, Matthew, I'm sorry. It's either the real thing or nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so these machines are getting getting shared within the the, the communities there. But what about um uh maybe sort of the admin side of things you know the processes when it comes to starting up a company do you actually have people in the background there that can also help um new entrepreneurs on, on how to build the structure of, of these companies um so overall Keska is very much focused on like organic growth organic right. innovation so a lot of it comes out of just people talking to each other Oh, and, yeah. But also peeping, helping each other, and there are there are uh, multiple ex experienced entrepreneurs who are also talking to the more younger entrepreneurs. So they're helping each other. Uh, there's no like acceleration program or something right now, at least. Um, mm -hmm. But also, since we've opened our doors, we see new people coming over. Like there's now. Uh, like a very experienced, experienced sales coach who entered the field, who is now also talking to people mm -hmm. uh, to help people grow businesses. So, um, yeah, it's it's really growing organically, and so far, it's fun and yeah, things are it's happening. It's very exciting because I can imagine over the, the last eighteen months, so many people um, who maybe um, had lost their jobs are then turning to what skills they have, what transferable skills they have, um, and maybe even looking at their hobbies and thinking, do you know what, let's see if I can make some money from this. Yeah, I also see a lot of people just who are, I guess, sick of a, like a nine to five job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and other people who, who cannot have a boss, who cannot work with a boss or, you know, well, all kinds of people come here. Yeah. Mm. So if people want to get yeah. involved, um, what, what, what's the process? Is there like a membership fee that people have to pay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, like here in Master, you just pay for a desk and then you can sit here, work 24 7 whenever you want, mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can participate in all the events. And you can also visit the other locations, so in Kerkrade and Vals. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. So it's like uh, hiring in your own little space then? whether it's a desk or, or, or um, mm -hmm. a workspace. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's how it is in Master, but in Kerkrade, yeah, there are more machines. So you can put uh, your machines there as well. Uh -huh. And yeah. of course, in the next location, when we're relocating, there will be a big mm -hmm. industrial hall. So there will be space for all kinds of makers, like product designers, as well as uh, yeah, office parties. Okay. Uh, well, it sounds very exciting. I think uh, uh, this is a this is a really nice idea because, of course, when you're starting a new company, for a lot of people, um, trying to reach out on the internet uh, and find somebody that you can talk to, uh, collaborate with, not mm. necessarily so easy. It's nice to have somebody that you can actually sit down uh, creatively in a space and, and bounce ideas off each other. And the more people, the better, obviously. So um, I'm sure there's going to be some very exciting uh, innovations that are coming out of these places. Yeah, and yeah, and, um, a lot of things happening now. And who knows what the future will hold, you know? Brilliant. Uh, 
So if people just want to uh, get involved, how, how, um, how do they do that? Uh, well, I do have a shout out. Maybe that is a uh, go for it now. Because so we are uh, like relocating soon. And so I have a shout out for two groups of people. So mm -hmm. makers and designers uh, who are looking for a working space, looking mm -hmm. to be a part of a community of entrepreneurs and masters. Uh, they can reach out to Sebastian at keska.nl for Thank more you. information. And then entrepreneurs who do their magic with just a computer who are looking for a working space and also looking to be part of a community of entrepreneurs in Maastricht, they can reach out to me through uh, joris at keska.nl. Uh, yeah, ah. I'll also share those in the in the chat so people, uh, there's no spelling errors. <laughs> Yes, that's, that's yeah. true. We're always grateful for that. That would be we'll, we'll stick all those details uh, onto our social uh, posts um, after the show um, and spread the word. Uh, thank you so much for coming uh, onto the show. It's been lovely to meet you. Very exciting list. And we're, 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 let us know when everything is up and running in the, in the new venue um, because uh, we'll, once again, we'll, we'll, we'll spread the word. And, yes. Uh, yeah, well, those we'll entrepreneurs coming to see you because uh, I suspect there's uh, there's probably quite a few out there that uh, are needing a little bit of a helping hand, and mm. uh, we'd be very grateful to hang out with uh, like-minded people. Yeah, it's it's just good to for inspiration as well. That's one of the <laughs> main reasons for me to go there. I don't yeah. want to work by myself at home, and yeah, yeah. just be, being with people who do similar things. That's that's I find that really cool. No, absolutely. It's, uh, it's perfect timing, considering what we've been through for the last 18 months. Absolutely mm -hmm. perfect timing. Okay, my love, well, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's been absolutely lovely. As I said, we'll get all your information out uh, on our yeah. social show. And we look forward to hearing about the new venue and as and when it's all open and online. Very cool. Yeah, I'll keep you up to date. And That's thanks cool. for having me as a guest. Absolute pleasure. Take care now. All right. Bye. Thank See you. Bye-bye. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. This is something uh, sort of very buzzy, isn't there, about being in a room full of all these exciting new young minds who are sort of like, oh, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try that, and what about this, and what about that, sort of, uh, it's, uh, I find it quite contagious, actually. It's, it's good. And Maastricht is quite good for entrepreneurship. There's also the, there's that campus, isn't there, just outside the city, Bright Brightland, is it? Brightland. Yeah. That's also for entrepreneurs. So I think it's just, it's a good place to start a business. Lots going on, very international. Lots of work like Germany, Belgium, something. Absolutely. Well, I mean that's that's their tagline, isn't it? Where uh, Maastricht meets Europe. So uh, no, are. it's it's not just a, it's not just a slogan. <laughs> very true. No. So yes, very true. Excellent stuff. Well, lovely, jubbly. Right then, I believe Matthew, you have a quiz for us. I do. This is where Tracy gets very excited. <laughs> what sort of quiz have you got for us? Well, I had a think. I was like, well, let's see what we can remember about what's been going on for the last four years. And okay, Tracy's going to get your memory. No, I cannot remember it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get some of them. So there's ten questions. Sure They're not that hard. Well, some of them are a bit hard. But oh no, Matthew. <laughs> Yeah, well, the funny thing is, you guys think I remember your names, but of course on the screen here, your names are underneath your picture. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> there you go. Matthew, okay. may I ask, when you were researching the questions, did you know the answers yourself, or were you think, did I you, or you completely... Wow, okay. I tried not to the right. ones that I really didn't know the answer to, so I was like, that's not fair. Can't. <laughs> okay. They're not, they're not impossible. So, number one, okay, let's who was our first guest with the online version of the Master's Edition? I think that was one of our regulars. If it was Adina, I think, wasn't it? Or, yeah. or Robert, it was one of these people. Or, or, or Petra. You're, you're right that it's a regular guest, um, but it was Dennis. 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 Was he? Ah, oh, he was the fourth. It was one of our. <laughs> What are the, what are yeah, the odds? Oh, for goodness sake. Ah, Denise, yes. yeah. And question number two. In what month did we return online? That show Dennis was on. Denise was on. Oh, I think 
If I recall, I believe our first online show was on April 30th. Oh, I was going to say May. It's April. April's correct. April. The, the reason I know this is because it was Dave's birthday when we went back online for the first time. <laughs> so that's how I remember that. So there we are. <laughs> yeah, done. April indeed. Mm. Question number three. What was the first album that I reviewed? Oh, it was Fleetwood Mac, Rumours. It was, yes. <laughs> I do These are not so hard. <laughs> I know. Question number four. What was the location of our first birthday party? Oh, oh. we had this in the show, Joe. <laughs> Cafe's house. <laughs> Cafe's <laughs> house, yeah. Now, this next one may be a bit more challenging. Uh. So... How many venues did we officially visit during the Maastricht crawl? And bonus points if you can name them all. <laughs> well, I remember we started at the Brass Bar. We did. Yeah. And we, entered, we went to Bishop's Nolan at one point. We went to Pont Arte, the art studio. Yeah. And we also went, there was, yeah, the Bishop's Nolan, we had to wait. That was yeah. So COC's place. Yeah. That was three. I'd already left by then, so I didn't go to that part. Four. But there was more though. I don't yes. recall that. Uh, Adina's. We went to Adina's. Oh yes. I also wasn't there for that. I must have. Oh, I went to watch the rugby, and we went to yeah. Lumiere because I think I joined you all Lumiere. at the end. Yeah. That's the game. Yeah. <laughs> that, we went that's to, it. Um. Uh. Gadilda. Uh, Gilda, Gilda, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I also wasn't there for that. You had lunch. That's Good seven. Lunch. <laughs> we went to um, uh, the brewery. Yeah. The, Maastricht, the Stads Brewery, the Maastrichter Malteser. Yeah. Oh, we went to Roberts. Went to Roberts. Right. That was the last stop before we went for dinner in the evening, by which time... <laughs> Dinner was at uh, Quattro Mori Italian, if I recall correctly, wasn't it? Was that that night? Or was it somewhere else? Oh, no, we went to... I Post forget. Or... I, don't, I, I, know, I know it wasn't um, the Italian, because it, was it literally was, like, around the corner from Robert's. Yeah. Oh, right. So oh, it was the was open. tour. And, that's right. And I, I also wasn't there for that either, but I did get some interesting SMSs from certain people. <laughs> Yes. Um, have we missed anybody else? Yes. Was that it, Matthew? The cat cafe. We went to the cat cafe. Yeah. Oh, the cat cafe. God, there's more. Goodness you've me. Got, wow. I think, yeah, two more you've not said. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, yes. Ola, yeah. Oh, yes. Ola, of course. Yeah. And then one At more. the last... The last, give us a clue, Matthew, because we could be here all night. Uh, you could sit there and read for a long time. Oh, at the, um, uh, the bookshop in the... Um, in the oh, book, book, book Candle Dominican. There you go. <laughs> oh, very good. Well done. <laughs> we made it in the end. There were 12 places. Was he really? Yeah. What was I thinking? <laughs> That, that's why by the end of the evening we're all exhausted. Because <laughs> I remember trying to work all that out. And, oh yeah, we can walk here, we can walk there, and get this. Yeah, it'd be fine. But yes, by the time we got to Robert's place, we were ready for a drink. We were. That, it was a and horrible that we, that we got. day as well. Yeah, it was also a really dull weather day, I recall. It was raining. Yeah, lots of fun. Lots and lots of fun. Cool. Yeah. Next so, question, Matt. Next question, also a bit tricky. Uh, what was the name of the album recommended to us by Zhao Nevis? Oh. I mean, that's good. I'm going to have to look that one up. I don't remember <laughs> that one. Yeah. I do have it in my collection because I bought the bloody thing. But um, I, no. do, I do remember I listened to it and I don't think I liked it. I don't think either of you liked it. Yeah. No. no. It was. I Alice don't think I like that particular. I could get it. What, what was it called, Matthew? Alison oh, Paul. it was, yes, the man and that lady. It was, yeah, I remember, yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, question number seven. 
Thanks to the lovely Denis, which band from Eurovision 2021 did we get to interview? The Italians. Yes, but what are they called? Tracy, come on. Oh, sorry, guys. I missed oh. that one because I, I asked what is the name so I didn't hear of that the band? <laughs> Apparently, I've been lucky. What was the band we interviewed during Eurovision? It was uh, the fabulous chaps from Italy, and <laughs> they were called. Oh, uh, they were called. Oh, on you. I can't remember their name. They have a. with an M. An N. M. M. Oh, Maniskin. Yes. Maniskin. Yes. Maniskin. Fabulous song. Well done. Yes. Question number eight. What was the, what is the name of Petra from Euler's adorable dog? Hugo. Hugo. Yes. <laughs> Very good. On which street will you find our wine expert Robert Koning's wine shop? The Rechtstraat, number 49. Correct. Next to the shoe shop. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. And the final question. Our genius guest Laura over at Pika Pot Beer makes her beer from which leftover food? Bread. Bread. Yes. <laughs> oh, that was quite all right, Matthew. There you are. It wasn't so bad. There, there are technical issues all over the place. At one point, I couldn't see either of you, and everything had frozen. But not oh. to worry. But very good, very good quiz, Matthew. Nice. Yes, excellent, excellent. Well, uh, well, same time next year. We'll get you in just for that. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, uh, but Matthew, Matthew, you are here next week, right? Or is yep. this really? Yes, you see, there you go. So yes, we still have for another couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm that's not leaving right. until um, second week of October. Maybe. Oh, there you go. So you've got two more sessions with you. Yeah, yeah. Fine. 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 Right, let's get some tissue pitties underway before we leave this evening. Trace, what have you got? Yes, of course. Well, first of all, in the new tradition of Tracy's Tasty Fitty Bitties, I want to recommend everybody to go to Kobe Maastricht, uh, oh. which is the Japanese restaurant in Maastricht. Oh, and Dave and I had the pleasure of passing by last week, Saturday, and it was truly fabulous. So really very nice uh, very nice evening. Book in advance. They're very, very popular and they turned many people away uh, while we were there uh, because they hadn't booked. So oh. you need to secure your table, but it's really very nice, very authentic. We enjoyed some lovely sake and took us right back to Kyoto. So it was really very nice. And another uh, kind of reminder, because it's coming up quite soon, um, the expat center of Maastricht uh, region is having a welcome event next week, Thursday, Ooh, on the 30th. And um, this is nearly two years uh, later, having yeah, the last one was two years ago, and now they can finally sort of get together again and have a sort of an event. Um, now, I know it's the same night as the show, but you can always watch the show and then go to the event afterwards, you know, because uh, I mean, get there at eight o'clock. It's still going to be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> you need to check out uh, online all of the details and you do need to register in advance so people know you're coming. But uh, have a look. Um, it's bound to be a very nice evening. We've been to some of these um, events ourselves and they're a nice mixer and they're certainly nice if you're new to the area and um, if you're fed up with being fed up with being at home because of covid and even if you're old to the area and you just want to reconnect with some people so there's many options there so that's next week thursday the 30th of september marvelous stuff i just want to give a quick shout out um, we mentioned oiler earlier petra at oiler has started up her dutch cuisine nights again so if you fancy some traditional dutch cuisine um, she is going to be uh, taking orders until Sunday for a pickup on Wednesday, and this happens every week. You get a main course and a dessert for eight ninety five. Oh. I mean, really, that's very, very good value. It is very good. But Petra, please try and come up with a vegetarian option so Tracy can come <laughs> by and pick something up. <laughs> 
I know because I really want to support because I mean she's such a wonderful chef and the, the portions are enormous and it's also authentic and she takes such good care but a lot of Dutch cuisine is, is heavily meat based I guess um, so maybe there's an option out there for something for us uh, non-meat eaters and then I really want to go for the dessert but um, you know <laughs> I, I probably should have dinner first right so uh, we'll let let's listen out and maybe dessert. we'll and one, one, oh, one of them is dinner and one of them is back. There you go, problem solved, double dessert. <laughs> I, would say, I, li I like your thinking. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, I like your thinking. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll put some details about that out uh, as well. So you order by Sunday to pick up the following Wednesday. And that's typical Dutch food, um, uh, definitely from the Maastricht area. Area, if not uh, the Netherlands. So, excellent stuff. Well, um, first of all, apologies for all the technical issues that we've had this evening. We have had quite a few gremlins getting into the works uh, tonight. It has been a bit on and off, so we do apologise uh, for that. Thank you so much, everybody, not just for tonight, but for the last four years, really. We, we are so, so grateful for your support. Um, it's, uh, it's been a, a fantastic ride. We're looking forward to the next uh, four years, um, even though we won't have our lovely Matt with us. But uh, we, the, the rest of us will be here. And uh, we've still got it for another couple of weeks, Tracy. <laughs> Don't stop blowing <laying> it. <laughs> we shall be back. Next week, lovely weekend. Um, Tracy will have stopped crying by then, hopefully. Uh, I hope so. See you next Thursday. Thanks ever so much once again. We'll see you then. Thanks a lot. Take care now. Bye. Bye. So I want.